Two members of the Oath Keepers have just been convicted for sedition. In fact, the founder of Oath Keepers, his name is Stuart Rhodes, and one other member, Kelly Meggs, have been found guilty of seditious conspiracy in connection with the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. Now, for those who might have missed some of the details in the story leading up to this moment, I'll fill you in, starting with who Stuart Rhodes is and what he did. Now, Rhodes is the founder of the right wing Oath Keepers, which is a militia group, which I prefer to call right wing gang. And he's been found guilty of seditious conspiracy, a charge arising from the attack on the US Capitol by supporters of Donald Trump. Rhodes's four co-defendants were Kelly Miggs, or Meggs, I should say, who was also found guilty, Kenneth Harrelson, uh, Jessica Watkins and Thomas Caldwell. Meggs was convicted of seditious conspiracy, but the rest were acquitted. Now, how much time do they face in prison? Remember, they have not been sentenced yet. They've just been found guilty by a federal jury. They face up to 20 years in prison. Rhodes and Meggs, who were also charged alongside all the other people I mentioned earlier, are among the first Americans to be convicted of treason related charges in decades. In fact, the last time anyone was charged with treason in the United States was back in 2010. But that individual was not convicted of that charge. So that was a DOJ charge against an individual and a militia member in Michigan. But again, that person was not convicted of the charge. Moving on, what did they do? Well, according to The Independent, Rhodes and his allies spent weeks discussing a violent response to the 2020 election on encrypted, not encrypted enough apparently, messaging apps. Then organized a weapons and supply cache at a nearby hotel before joining the mob that broke through the Capitol's doors and windows to storm the halls of Congress and block the certification of Joe Biden's presidency, according to federal prosecutors. So the prosecutors had those messages, which of course they provided as evidence to the jury. And it was certainly convincing enough for the jury to find these two individuals guilty. Prosecutors also fell shy of saying that they had plans to enter the Capitol, but they did argue that they conspired to commit an act of treason. Attorneys for the Oath Keepers, though, say, no, they were, I mean, those messages are no biggie. They were just boastful and like, you know, uh, attorneys for the Oath Keepers claimed that the mountains of text messages and video evidence putting their violent rhetoric on display was their own frustrated bombast and not an actual threat. And the jury disagreed. The reason they disagreed is because they carried out the threat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they actually entered the yeah. building, broke in, and, and had all those things. But actually, so I read a very long piece, and then I interviewed the guy who wrote the piece about Stuart Rhodes. And so I know a little bit of detail about him. And he is, he's an interesting cat. He, he's actually relatively intelligent. But my assessment is that he's got mental health issues, which I think a lot of the right wing leaders do, honestly. And so in, his, in this case, his, he had several significant problems. One was that he accidentally admitted the whole plot, right? And the reason he admitted the whole plot is because he genuinely thought it was okay. So, so let me explain. So they had stashed away a lot of weapons in the hotels and they were gonna go in and they thought that Trump was gonna go with them to the Capitol. They were gonna barge into the Capitol and then they were gonna declare Trump the actual president and you know, president elect again. Of course, at the time he was the president. And that Trump was then going to declare them an official militia. So he drank his own Kool-Aid. That's not a thing, but he genuinely believed it was a thing. And he believed that Trump was gonna do all these things. That's why if you've seen in some of his interviews afterwards, he's like genuinely shocked and and really like heartbroken that Trump didn't do any of the things that he said he was gonna do, <laughs> right? Oh my God. He's like, why didn't he declare us a militia? Then it would have been official. Why didn't this and this happen? Why didn't he walk with us to the cow? No, he's a con man, you're his mark. And he didn't get that. And so he walked right into it and he told the authorities, oh yeah, we had the weapons over there, we didn't use them. We we're waiting to be declared a militia. Can we, look, I know this seems out of left field, but I gotta say it because it's on my mind every time we deal with stories involving individuals who might have mental health issues. Just one policy change in this country could 
really have a lasting impact on all the issues we talk about on the show regularly. Medicare for all. If everyone in this country could get the health care that they need, including mental health care that they need, maybe they wouldn't be victims to lies from con men. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I do. And so I've been trying to figure out why does the right wing have a proclivity to follow people who are not mentally well? And I'm not trying to be like, ha ha. And I've done that plenty of times in the past. I'm not trying to troll you. It's a real thing, okay? So Trump is obviously has significant mental health issues. He's a narcissist beyond anything anybody's ever seen. Sociopath cannot relate to any other individual. Kanye West is obviously not mentally well. Roseanne Barr back in the day. Roseanne. Roseanne, oh, what was that? Roseanne Barr. <laughs> okay, the French version of Roseanne Barr, <laughs> Roseanne Barr. Anyway, Roseanne Barr, Ted Nugent, Glenn Beck has admitted that he goes on a gyroscope to try to heal his mental health issues. Uh, I mean, you go down the whole list, a shockingly high percentage of right wing leaders have like either or obviously mentally un unwell or have admitted to being mentally unwell, right? And so, and Kanye said, oh, I went off my medication. And then still people love them, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's because people who have that kind of mental health issue, it comes packaged with this grandiose view of themselves. Mm. So they, and I've, I've known people in my personal life. And when they and people who were really sick, and then one guy got really sick, and he thought he was Muhammad, risen, right? Wow. And so that these guys they might not, but Kanye does say it. He says he's Jesus. He says he's Martin Luther King. He says like he, these guys. So that's why they act out and they act like alphas, like fake alphas, obviously, right? Obviously, the rest of us, and they're like, oh, I'm the greatest thing ever, and you should all hate those guys, right? Because they're not well. But unfortunately for the right wing mind, that's really alluring. They are looking for some really strong person to blame someone else for their problems. And so mental health problems is actually kind of a bonus for right wing leaders. It's a huge advantage for them. So I come back to Stuart Rhodes, the guy's now going to prison for a long time for treason. Why did people follow him? A lot of, I mean, he set up this Oath Keepers. He was the leader and they all worshiped him. Because same kind of thing, we're gonna take down the US government. And we're gonna bring back real America where white people rule with weapons. And people are like, ah, and the right yeah. wing loved it. I think one of the most powerful things, one of the most powerful urges that humans have is the urge to live a life of purpose. And in our current state, as workers experience the precarious nature of being a worker, the instability, the lack of power, they look for purpose elsewhere. And I think that's part of it as well. I think that they want to feel that they're having a lasting impact on this country. So that's part of it too. I think that's mixed into this toxic stew where people are getting manipulated. They're destroying their own lives by being manipulated by these con men, by these phony pretend strong men. And yeah, it's it's put not only putting themselves and their families at a massive disadvantage because it destroys their lives, but it hurts the country. It really does. So I don't know what the answer is. I, I just we're in this mess and it's incredible. Like I remember when Trump won in 2016. I was like, all right, well, this is not good. But all people need is a year of his leadership to see that he was a fraud, right? That he never even bothered to talk about policy on the campaign trail. And if he did mention policy, he didn't actually get detailed about how he would accomplish the policies that he claimed that he would accomplish. But no, as the years went on, his base fell more and more in love with him. And I still struggle to explain it considering how much he actually hurt them in a lot of ways, like the farmers whose livelihoods were destroyed by Trump's weird aimless trade war, <laughs> right? Like, it's just, I don't get it, but yeah, yeah I don't know. So the, to, to, a lot of great points in there. So last couple of things here, Stuart Rhodes was not a con man. He he was a true believer, right? Donald Trump is a con man, there's just a giant difference, right? Kanye is a true believer in his own, in himself, right? In, in a way that is mentally un, unhealthy, right? Uh, but. But so the reason I'm telling you that difference is because con men like Trump come in and they take advantage of a couple of things that Anna talked about. They, they, 
I mentioned they need leadership. They did, they really, I mean, Trump's best line was when he said about banning Muslims, he said, we gotta ban them from the country until we know what the hell is going on. And that's a perfect description of the right wing. They don't know what the hell's going on. So they're just like, let's ban people that don't look like us until we figure out what the hell's going on, right? So they're desperate for leadership. They don't know what's going on. They're also, he weaponizes their insecurity and yeah. their need for purpose that Anna pointed out, right? And he takes all that and goes, perfect. Exactly the mark I was looking for. These suckers and losers will give me anything I want. They'll give me money, they'll give me power, they'll give me fame, and he uses them. That's why a guy like Trump is actually, in my opinion, infinitely worse than a guy like Stuart Rhodes, mm -hmm. who even though Stuart Rhodes is dangerous and did do these things and should be punished, got suckered by a guy like Trump. People like Stuart Rhodes just serve as pawns for people like Trump. Yes, he's a pawn. Maybe at best, in his best day, he's a bishop, <laughs> but but overall, because he's leading others. But look, where did he lead you? He led you into a disaster. And now you're gonna serve long prison sentences, which you deserve, okay? Because America was never your enemy. Ironically, it was the guys who wanted to take advantage of you, the guys who actually are your enemy, who convinced you to attack the country that you thought you loved. But you just went down this dark, dark path. Guys, do not listen to guys telling you how they've got it all figured out and you need to attack people and you need to give them money. You need to do all these things for them, but they never have to do anything for you. Trump's never delivered for a single human being on his side ever. In fact, that's our very next story.